Nick, it's good to see you. We are doing the casual Friday recording again. It is, I think it's required at the beginning of all of these to say it's been a while. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. I don't know when you and I did the last one of these. I feel this is very well. I have to go back and check. This very well could be our first of the year. Oh, probably is. Yeah. Probably so. And it's only what, the middle of February? Although, right. you know, it's been a busy start to the year. Yeah, we have a few things going on. Um, a better a better start to 2023 than we had start to 2022 that's for sure mm -hmm. um what are clients talking about with you right now no they're just happy to see some gains for sure um, relief that's what relief. they're talking yeah. about yeah yeah, yeah. well exactly. i think we all share some relief mm -hmm. you know it's funny i the, um we're going to talk about some charts from uh an old a guy that used to work at lpl research ryan dietrich he's now at uh carson wealth uh, and he has a statistic, you've probably seen it, where it's like if uh, if January is positive, it's mm. pretty likely that we have a positive year. If January is above 5%, it's even more likely. And if January, if S&P in, in January is above 5%, coming off of a negative year the year prior, then it's really, really likely that things go really, really well. I, I'll be honest with you, that statistic feels a little bit like, did the groundhog see a shadow or not? Um, mm -hmm. But I guess the numbers bear it out. So a good January, a relief rally a little bit. It's a good thing. And uh, February tends to kind of get weak in the second half. So even though we're all charged up, it might be some two steps forward, one step back kind of situation right. as we start the year. Um, well, good. Uh, well, like we always do with COVID or with COVID, like we always do with uh, Casual Friday, we start with some charts uh, and we'll go from there. You can see if you're watching on on one of our videos, you'll see in the background, we've got a little bit of football theme going on this week. Um, Super Bowl is coming up on Sunday. Nick, what are you doing to watch the Super Bowl? We don't have plans yet. Uh, so, yeah, I'll definitely watch it, but it might be here. It could be low key, that. some chips and dip in your living room kind of situation. Oh, yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's good. good. Um, we're, we're getting together with friends, um, but this is only a recent development because after the, I, I did not make any plans on the hope that the 49ers were going to be in the Super Bowl because if that was the case, I was going to be alone in the dark room. Okay. I was chewing gonna... off all my fingernails watching right, the 49ers right. play in the Super Bowl. So yeah, there's a couple different types of types of home fans, ones that just totally want to be left alone and those who, who need a little support. So if my team's not in it, all I don't even care. Right. Uh, on. Like right on. Christian McCaffrey said in an interview just a couple of days ago, I hope both teams lose. Saw that. Saw that. Well, and that may have some market faulty. Yeah, that might have some market impacts, which we'll see in a little bit. But we're gonna do our homework first and then move on to the fun stuff. Um, we'll start here with, with one of our first charts. This is, these are just some charts. It just, to, as a refresher, if you're watching this for, or listening to this for the first time, we, we look at, we just find charts every week or whenever in the weeks that we do this, uh, that pique our interest, uh, that we find that we think are interesting to us and might be interesting to you as well. The first one we have is, uh, the, is the chart showing mortgage applications. You'll see, I pulled this from the daily shot, which is. Uh, an email service that emails that charts every day. Uh, and so um, it might be interested if you love charts, but this is the mortgage broker association purchasing index. Um, and you can see here that mortgage applications are running just above 2014 and 2015 levels, which is to say pretty low and as low as they have been since at this point in the year, since 2015, mm -hmm. Um, I don't, when I talk with clients, no one's moving. The only right. people getting a mortgage, as Joe Perry said on our podcast a few months ago, are people like getting divorced who have to buy each other out. What, how, when you're talking with clients, anybody moving around shopping for mortgages, doing anything like that, Nick? No, no, definitely not. I think with the combined run up in housing prices, along with increased mortgage interest rates, then people that, you know, like I think we've talked the both of us locked in some pretty good rates and yep. during the pandemic and, and after. And yeah, uh, people are happy with that and, and c content to stay where they are for the time. Yeah. Being. Even people with lousy rates lock in better rates. In the last right. Right. Year. Yes. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so no, no surprise that mortgage applications are lower. Not pictured here are home equity line of credit applications. I guess those are going up. And, and in our podcast, Joe actually predicted that people were going to be doing that more and more because 
if you're not leaving, but it's the house isn't working for you, well, then you've got to do something about it. Right. right. Which could mean new appliances. It could be add additions or upgrades or doing the bathroom renovations. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah. We actually had a, a small piece of tile uh, chip off of, of the bathtub um, in our bathroom actually yesterday. So that's. Well, that uh, means you need to redo the whole bathroom, right? <laughs> Depends who you talk to. But yeah, I have heard that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you guys will have to arm wrestle a rock, paper, scissor to see right, exactly right. What, how this like results. Um, I'd be lying to you. I, when we moved into our house a few years ago, there, the master bathroom needs to be freshened up. And so mm -hmm. the question is, you know, do you just some new tile or do you really like, yeah, you know, yep. you know? so I guess you and I both are dealing with this same issue that a lot of people are talking about or, you know, wrestling with, which is you're staying put, the mortgage is so low, you want to die in your house. Right. Um, and it's reflected here where maybe, mm -hmm. maybe people are doing other things. All right, we'll take the next, uh, I, what, you know, earnings season has been going on. And so this is an, a chart that I found that was interesting. This is this chart actually shows, again, this is from the Daily Shot uh, from a couple of days ago, uh, or I guess just yesterday. Uh, this shows the aggregate S&P 500 Q4 earnings has actually missed estimates for the first time since the great financial crisis. Uh, so you can see on the left side of the chart here, uh, uh, Earning, uh, earnings aggregate S&P 500 earnings missed in Q3 of 07. And you can see what went on from there. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get below, didn't uh, uh, miss in, in aggregate uh, in, during COVID, interestingly, probably because we uh, rolled the money printers and-, and Right, and right. People have had some cash to spend. Yep. Um, a couple of- I don't know. What do, you, what do you see when you look at this chart, Nick? What do you think? Well, this is kind of, um, you know, you see this is kind of the general slowdown that, that people have been talking about that we've uh, been talking about as well. Sure. And then, you know, if you kind of look at the what the stock market did last year, uh, you know, trimming off 20 to 25 percent, depending even more in, in certainly some stocks. Yeah. You know, if, if the market is predictive, like we think it is typically, you know, it almost predicted that we'd have this this kind of slowdown. Um, you know, you can see where it came from uh, the you know twenty percent beat down all the way to zero. So that is that is quite a, quite a dip. Yeah. There. And so you know, yeah. Well, it's interesting. You know, as you're looking back in 06 and and early 07, um, earnings were hovering around that median point, right? That that four point nine five percent point. And it, and it hugs the median pretty tightly. If you can see after the great financial crisis and before COVID, I mean, it's, I mean, you don't have these real wide variations here too much. Right, right. Um, and so you can see it went from kind of at median cratering during the great financial crisis. And then the rebound was really stout 09, 2010, and then kind of reverted to the mean ultimately in 11. Um, I think what's interesting now is um, we're mean reverting. <laughs> Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Coming off of the 20 percent beat, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, th so even though it's the first time since 07, I would say the conditions are way, way, way different. Right. Right. Yeah. Built, built a little bit of a cushion. That's yeah. Uh, but, it, so. it, you know, it's undeniable. Also, if you get close to that zero or below just on these last two recessions, you got to think recession, which right. honestly, every other leading indicator it, is suggesting. Right. If you look even some of the coincident indicators are, I mean, everything's screaming recession right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You want, you want to make a recession call on this right now? No, that's. that's oh, okay. I will. I'm saying second half of this year. Okay. Okay. You know, Fair we'll enough. see. We'll see. I don't know. You can't have full employment and have a recession. So we'll see. Right. Um, okay. So those were a couple, those were a couple interesting ones. Um, we are going to move on now to, one could argue more interesting ones, charts. but you more interesting charts because we're talking we're talking football now, which is what really everybody cares about at this point. And we're trying to look at what in this case what happens in the Super Bowl and how it we can't correlation doesn't equal causation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if we say what happens in the Super Bowl and then what has happened in historically with markets, um, let's take a look here. Why don't you lead us on this one because this was. This was your idea with the Super Bowl stuff. Tell me what we're looking at. Right. So the average um, average year for the S&P 500, um, 
you know, eight and a half percent going back. So this is a uh, 56 years we've had. So this, we must be on pretty Super good Bowl sample 50. size. Pardon? Huh? A pretty good sample size. Yeah. Decent sample size. So that means Super Bowl 57 uh, just in a couple days and uh, going back in time, right. Um, eight and a half percent is the average year for the S and P 500. And then a hit rate of about 71%. But if the NFC wins, we get an up, uh, up 10% and a little bit better hit rate. And then the AFC wins just a 7%. Um, so a little bit below our average. Does this make it so anybody who doesn't care should be a Philly fan? A little bit, maybe. A little maybe, bit. Maybe, yeah. Well, I mean, it's. Uh, I think it's, I think maybe really what's going on here is that we just have a lot of, we have more good years than bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, in and that's, gets, that's what gets reflected in here. Yeah. I mean, the hit rate for an average year yeah. with, I mean, and I know the NFC is, dominated. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, the the uh, you know the NFC dominated in the in the eighties and early nineties and won I don't know how many straight Super Bowls from like eighty five to the late nineties, and we had some obviously some really good bull markets yep. there. That's a great point, uh, and in fact, we'll see yeah. a little bit of that on some of the next charts because lately. It's a great segue, Nick. I'm glad you thought of it. Lately, we've had a lot of AFC winners, and this chart's showing that the AFC winners have been good for bull markets here lately. Right, um, right. Yeah, so some some really good numbers there just in general. Uh, I mean, going back to clear to 2004, right. um, you know, it's been, it's been fantastic, except for 2015 when New England won. Mm-hmm. Um, but there have been other years where New England won, like 2019, the S&P was up nearly 30%. So uh, on the correlation meter, I'd say this ranks pretty low, <laughs> right? But still interesting, still interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's been good this these last Yeah, years. these are just fun to look at. You know, the fur- certainly the furthest thing from investment advice. Is- <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. You're saving me from putting the disclaimer on this at the end. Um, so here, this next one is one of my – this is one of the favorite ones that you found. This is, these are all still from Ryan Dietrich. Um, how does the S and P 500 do when your team wins mm-hmm. now for everybody watching, listening, Nick, you are a bears fan. That's right. Um, there, as I mentioned, there's still a little bit of room on the 49er bandwagon. If you want to make the switch, although you rightly identified, there's not, I mean, if we get, get- yeah, but if we can get, um, you know, like I said, those Niners wins from the 80s, we had some good good bull markets in the 80s, and, and you can see no that, uh, you know, ranks, I guess ranks third there. I think, uh, ranks third. you know, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay won in 2009, so we had a big rebound, um, right, was that it? A big yep. rebound after the uh, GFC, so that's, uh, that's a little bit skewed there, and then, uh, yeah. yeah. But number the one, are- Tampa Bay, number two, the Steelers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and your maybe. Bears ranked six overall. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just the one, just one. You know, small one sample on. size. <laughs> small sample size. We'll say. Uh-huh. I'm really trying to. But I still have the the VHS from Super Bowl twenty with the Bears win somewhere in the house here. Nice, so. nice time to convert that to I would say DVD, but now it's converted to MP4. Uh-huh. <laughs> and digitize that sucker. Right, right. Well, next year yeah. could be your year. Right? More fun. Well, good. Okay. So th- th- now the next one, this one was one of my favorites, mostly because it made the 49ers look good. The next one is uh, whether you should be rooting for a Super Bowl blowout. So walk us through this one here. This was your favorite. Yeah. So again, with the, we see the average there, the same from the first time, but then we see if the, if the game's not close, so if we get a blowout, then they, we get uh, 13% on the S and P 500. If we get double digit win, at least, um, so it's a three touchdown win to just a double digit win, still 11%. And then the single digit win. So a close game down, down to the wire is only 5%. So, yeah, I guess what we can really root for, um, you know, maybe lean Philly, but definitely lean for some sort of blowout. Yeah. Um, you know, one of those where you don't really need to pay attention to the game and you can just focus on the commercials. Yes. Yes. F- focus on the commercials or watching your kids. Make right, sure they're not doing anything dumb during the Super Bowl party. Anything food. but the Super Bowl because the margin will be so wide. Um, that's good. That's going to help all of us as investors in mm-hmm. theory. In theory. All right, let's wrap it up, Nick, with the last one that, that we had in here, which are, um, I guess, these are uh, blowouts uh, of 21 points or more, which was kind of first indicated in that last right. chart. So, yeah, um, 
you yeah, obviously, uh, you know, Super Bowl 20 in there with the Bears and, and the Patriots, um, you know, looking pretty good there. And is then, that the biggest? I'm looking here. Is that the No, that there the was biggest, uh, there's the, different. There's oh, the Niners. Yeah, Niners Broncos. Oh, yeah. The Niners that. Broncos. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was a good year. That was that a good was. year. A good year. Was that that was that the Steve Young? No, Steve Young was the '95. Okay, there are okay. so many Niner ones in here, though. I can yeah, see right. it's easy to get turned around on that. <laughs> um, no, yeah. yeah, Steve Young was '95, so I guess '90 would have been maybe Montana's last one there. Um, gotcha. Interestingly, the biggest blowout, but one of two negative returns. Yeah. That year. Yeah. So, but you know, I, I let's get real here. You go early 90s, that's Greenspan starting to raise rates, kind of teetering us into a recession in the early 90s. Clinton's running for president saying it's the economy stupid. I mean, those right. those were the conditions in there. And then as rates start to come down, you can see the Cowboys win in 93 and the 49ers win in 95. Markets are racing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 01, what do we have going on in 01? That's tech bubble burst, 9-11, oh, yeah. and Enron. 9-11, and yeah, all that. Period. Yep, yep. Um, although so anyway, I, you know, interesting stuff. I think it's a lot, I think it's fun, especially in Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. Um, to take yeah. a look at this stuff. This is a great idea to do. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll try and find, I, I will, I guess your next task, Nick, after finding these great charts is finding something having to do with, uh, the, whether the groundhog sees his shadow and what happens with yeah. markets or Cupid yeah. or St. Patrick's Day. The number of DUIs in Fresno and how that correlates to the S&P 500 or whatever it is. I mean, I guess we can make these these uh, stats say anything we want if we if we dig hard enough. Well, right? yeah, what I um, what they say there's lies, lies damn lies, lies and statistics, and... right? So you got to take all these with a grain of salt. <laughs> well, good stuff. Well, we'll leave it there, uh, Nick. Thanks for doing this. This is a lot of fun. We'll right. we'll have to do another one. We won't wait until next February, of course. That's right. It. So, yeah. good stuff. Have a good weekend. Okay. Thanks a lot. You too.